Space Bug, what up? Space Bugs come to uh, read all of our uh, our fucking horoscopes and shit. So if you guys need a horoscope reading, Space Bugs got you. What's up, humanity? Space Bug coming at you with a, an Astrology of Strange music video. And we're doing this as a one take. We're not going to fucking edit it. We're not going to try 57 times. We're just going to do it and get it right. So, Universal Gods, please do this right with us. We thank you for all the knowledge and awesomeness that you give us. And we hope to do honor to your greatness by proving magic is real to the world with stuff like this. <clears throat> so, this is Recognize's chart. Um, Recognize is a member of the band Mayday and an amazing solo artist. He was born on May 5th, 1983. Uh, he just dropped a new video for the track The Coldest Dish, and it is probably the most intense emotional experience you're ever going to get from a music video, honestly. And so I recommend you check it out. I'm going to put a link in it, or to it, in the video. Um, he just dropped the album Pressure Point a while ago. Actually, more recently, it was Funny Winter 3, so check those both out. Um, band camps where I would check them out, but you can also get them on YouTube or Spotify. If you're not a part of the Patreon for Recognize, the Wrecking Crew, I highly recommend that you join us. Um, Wrecking Crew, what's up, bitches? T-Rex in the house? Sorry, guys, but yeah. It's it's the most um, amazing thing I've ever been a part of, the Wrecking Crew. Um, it's the lowest tier starts at $3 a month, and the highest tier is $20. And with the gold or $20 tier, you get quarterly merch drops, exclusive Wrecking Crew merch, which is mind-blowingly awesome. Um, my t-shirt's always dirty, because it's the most comfortable thing on the planet. But on my altar, I have my pin. My hats are up there in my little stash spot for my stuffies, but... Join the Wrecking Crew. You get your Friday Night Lives and everything else, but I shouldn't talk about that because that's going to actually be in the chart. So, Patreon, The Wrecking Crew, join us if you like Wreck. If you're watching this video and you're not a part of the Wrecking Crew, then there's no excuse for why you aren't on the Wrecking Crew. So, just go join us. Um, we're making an EP. He's making us an EP. It's been a really rewarding experience um, as a fan and as a human. Now, born May 5th. 1983, recognized as a Taurus Sun, Aquarius Moon, and Scorpio Ascendant. I have a cheat sheet. What does that mean? Okay, so having his Ascendant in Scorpio at 22 degrees would mean that in a way he comes off to the world as mysterious, um, intense, probably a little bit of a sex symbol, probably for the bitches. One take, we're not going to go back. Anyway, mysterious, um, great depth, intensity. Most of his first house is in Sagittarius, which would um, kind of be like the responsible teacher energy. Probably comes off with like a very wise spiritual, uh, I don't know, something. I'm sure that that makes sense considering. Now. The ruler of the ascendant sign is the ruler of the chart. So if you're going with traditional astrology, we would be looking at Mars, and then nowadays technology, current day technology, we would be looking at Pluto. So Mars is in Taurus in the sixth house, um, showing that he spends his energy doing like synthetical, practical things, or things that produce tangible, practical results with his energy that are service to others. Um, and that will be an important element of his life. Also, if we go to the Pluto side, it's Pluto and Libra in the 11th house, so um, reinventing balance in the larger social groups of the world, like the internet is the 11th house. Um, yeah. So that's his ascendant translation. We're going to move down. Oh, no, we're not. In the first house, we have Uranus and Jupiter conjunct in Sagittarius. What does that mean? That means he has a very unique and expansive energy. When you meet him, he's not like anybody you've met before. I'm sure that he leaves a specific like signature on the world around him. Um, probably didn't fit in in like social school situations like. Growing up, we get to kind of pick our friends, but when we're in school, we don't really have a choice of who we're around, and so 
probably had some big rebellion energy there or um, just being super unique and not like the rest of the group. Moving to the second house, we have the south node and Neptune conjunct in Sagittarius. So the south node is your past, like where your, your foundation you're coming from as far as like generally I associate it with past lives. Neptune is illusion and the breaker down of illusion. So the second house being value and Capricorn being profession. Um, probably Rex doesn't really see his value as a professional person. Like he personally has some falsehoods in his mind about the actual impact or the actual value of the things he's doing. The things that build the foundation, like root chakra stuff, to support the first house of self. So house, uh, money, you know, food, stuff that supports your life. So I would say the quickest way to interpret that would be not seeing his true value. And that has to do something with uh, past life where either he was um, flighty, no offense, Sagittarius, but you're a flighty ass fucking fire sign, um, or pursuing like wisdom. Sagittarius travels. Sagittarius doesn't like to be pinned down. They like their freedom. So maybe he ran away from being able to build a foundation instability. I don't know. Past lives are tricky. One take. We're not going to stop it. Past lives are tricky because you never know. You never know for sure unless the person can verify it from their own memory. Not worrying about whatever just crashed down in the house. We're going to go on to the third house where we have Lilith and the moon in Aquarius. Now what does it tell us to have Lilith and the moon in Aquarius? Third house is communication, siblings, and short trips. Aquarius is the rebel, the humanitarian, um, unique energy. Lilith, it's kind of cool to see that they're both the moon symbol, because Lilith is the black moon. I think it's an asteroid. Or it's a hypothetical point, I'm not positive. But, in Aquarius, we have somebody who is communicating about their feelings in a way that they're very passionate about or in a way that is very passionate expression. Um, probably really close emotionally with siblings. Rex thought expression. When he communicates what's inside of him, it brings enlightenment to people. And that is something that is very, you know, very solidly translated from Moon in Aquarius in the third. So when he can express from the backwards, like the subconscious mind, and communicate those things, it comes through an energy that will shake the foundation for people. It will bring them to a place they've never been. It will bring them enlightenment. I see is in Pisces at 13 degrees. Um, the internal quiet alone place inside Rex's mind. When he's all alone, there's there's no way another person can really ever touch your IC. Uh, if you see that in Sinistry, it'd be super fucking significant. But that's your, you know, inside quiet alone place energy. Being in Pisces, it probably feels a little bit like a prison. Um, or a mental institution. That's kind of Pisces 12th health energy. So, maybe not the most comfortable place to be. Uh, Pisces is also like rest and sleep and drugs or um, altered states of consciousness. So maybe when he's in that place just by himself, it's a transcendental experience. Very possible too. We have Eros in the fourth house showing that he finds his physical passion at home. Surprising for somebody who has to tour so much. Now in the fifth house, is the house of children i kid you not that is the house of children creativity and fun and romance what do we have we have the asteroids corbin and kelvin and this is the most interesting part of the chart for me as an astrologer because to see the twins in the house of children mind fucking blowing okay if they were in the sun of gemini it'd be even crazier but they're not and that's fine um they're not that kind of twin and you can see here that we have corbin in aries and Calvin in Taurus. 
So I imagine that they'll both embody the separate elements that they gain from him in the experience together. We have Taurus in the sixth house with the Sun and Mars. Okay, so like I was saying before, his Dharma. A wa water's Dharma is being wet, okay? So the thing that is going to be his experience or his place defining or whatever, something that defines his experience in life. Your Dharma moves you towards your karma. So routine, sixth house, work. Um, expressing energy, we're using your energy to deliver those tangible results from work, serving others. Now at the DC, we have Taurus, which is your interaction with DCs. Okay, AC is you, DC is everybody else. We have Mercury conjunct Mars, which is on the other side, and Chiron. So Mercury and Mars together conjunct right on top of that DC like that. Spending energy communicating with, with the world. And then Taurus is the sign that rules the voice and music. So, very, very easy translation there. Chiron being conjunct Mercury could indicate that there's a internal wound about not being able to communicate or not mm -hmm. feeling heard. Sorry about that, yo. That's the only thing I ever regret. Okay. So, very, you know possible. I would think this is going to come back to the 11th house interpretation. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But I do feel like it's linked very closely. Now we peep up here to the 8th house. We have... Oh wait. Wait. No. We're good. We're moving on. Right here in the 8th house, we have Venus, the North Node, and the Vertex. So, first and foremost, let me tell you guys this. Did you all know that Rec used to work making beats for pornos? Mm-hmm. Venus in the 8th house. That's what that is. Fucking yes it is. So, Venus is your creative expression, it's your resources, it's where you get money from. It's things that you consider comfortable and beautiful. Um, we have that in the sign of Gemini, which is rapid fire thinking, um, duality and to a degree, two sides of one coin, and the north node is your path you're supposed to follow in this life to achieve the Dharma, to get to your karma, is, or balance your karma. With the vertex over here in Cancer. Quickly, the vertex in Cancer could be considered finding his greatest luck dealing with either women or the home life or the emotions. Very clear for interpretation how that applies. Now, Venus in the North Node being an exact conjunction, so there's the same exact degree in Gemini. By using an intellectual expression of creative energy, he's following his destined path, eighth house, exposing things from underneath to the world and making money doing it. Because the eighth house is other people's money, it's things beneath the surface, and for Venus in the North Node to be there conjunct in Gemini is just mind-blowing. The significance, the validity, the beauty of that being here in this chart is undeniable. So when Rex sings and puts his brain and his heart out there, he's truly embodying what he's meant to do in this life. And we appreciate it. MC is in Virgo, uh, implying that his professional experience will be one that seeks perfection. And obviously that's true. I mean, hello. That's just Rec. That's just who he is. He doesn't, doesn't really know how to not fucking do it 10,000% over. Empty 10th house. No big deal that it's empty. It's still got a ruler and everything. Mercury. So, uh, career involving communication in a tangible way with others. Now, here in Libra, we see Pluto and Saturn, and that's in the 11th house. So, Saturn is restriction. It's also reality. Pluto is um, power, rebirth. Uh, it's kind of like the phoenix energy, like how I like to describe it. So, Libra being the 7th house natural sign and balance, we would read that as being restricted in expanding to the larger groups but reinventing your experience with that and finding a balance how do i interpret that personally the wrecking crew you know wreck may never be on well he was on mtv bitches but he may never be like that popular fucking super famous rapper that everyone knows their name 
but what's wrong with just having a bunch of weirdos in sporadic places around the world knowing your name and exalting you and just really genuinely appreciating you and feeling your your craft. And I think that since Saturn rules, you know, the Saturn return doesn't rule it, but it is the Saturn return. That's usually between 28 and 32. So at the point of the age of 32, Rex should have been in a place where he started to see the benefits of that restriction for what they really are. And that's probably when the change or the revision of viewpoint came into his life. Hey, hey Bailey. Dog came in to see us. Weird. Okay, Psyche being in the 12th house in Scorpio. Sad to say it like this, but um, Rick's kind of willing to sacrifice it all for the goal. Not like the family. I think the family is the goal. But putting your himself in a subjugated position, that's very much I see in Pisces too, in order to accomplish what he set out to accomplish in his life. Now, I would like to go back and say, on the sixth health vibe, um, routine consistency, uh, tangible results, and that would be, again, the Wrecking Crew. Friday Night Live, Gang Gang Walk with the Kids, Wreck is all about consistently consistency and tangible results. Um, these are things that make a difference in life, and that's just so true of the energy that's represented on the descendant side of the chart. Um, to do 52 free cells in a month or in a year, to do 52 free cells in a year is insane, and he didn't falter. For a artist to dedicate every Friday night to his fan group, that's insane, but the tangible results are that we are fucking dedicated. Uh, the Wrecking Crew is a beast about getting shit done. I'm gonna do their natal chart eventually, our natal chart. But this one is my first one on my plate. And this can be the first of many interpretations involving Rex chart. I just uh, wanted to get something out there. I've been trying to do this for months and my computer erased it and all sorts of other hell came down, but one other thing I want to say is, Rex, I knew we would be cool when I think you did a little bunny side hop or a little side hop in the fucking duck suit, chicken suit. I knew we would be down when I seen you do the side hop in the chicken suit for my own parade. And I wasn't wrong. Um, you're one of the best people, I think, that will ever live on this planet. I don't think we're going to make you a saint because fuck the church, but you get my vibe. Thanks for everything that you do. Thank you for following your path and bringing that to the people so that it can help us follow ours. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me and there will be more videos to come. Peace out, bitches.